Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. Good? All right. So, any questions before we continue going over new things? Any questions? So now we're finally in a new chapter. Today is, today's what? Right, okay, the sixth. Okay, and we're in section 2.1, which is called something like uh, the plane. Okay, so the first remark for today is, uh, let's talk about geometry. The, that is to say, the picture of what we're looking at. So when you're looking at the reals, when you're looking at the set of real numbers, that is to say, all, all the possible numbers, um, the way it is uh, drawn is as a straight line. So, now um, I have a question. What what is the meaning of of that right arrow? Notice that I didn't draw one on the other side. Okay, it 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 does. It, it, in, in some contexts, it, it means that, but it's no longer going to mean that now. Okay, it means something else. And it has to do with the fact that I drew it on just, just the one and not on the other side. What does it mean? Yeah? It's, it's in fact infinitely long in both directions. It goes all the way that way and also all the way that way. But why just, why just the arrow on the right side? Because this is because that's the direction of increase. That's the direction you go to get bigger ones. Okay, that's the increasing direction. Uh, for that reason, for that reason, if we were to select uh, two points, say like this one, point A, uh, and this one, point B, then from the information. Uh, provided you can't you can't tell me what a and b are like you can't tell me their values uh, but you can tell me which one is bigger which one is the bigger one b is the bigger one because it's further to the right okay however if for some reason i had drawn the arrow pointing the other direction that would mean that a is the bigger one okay so uh Almost essentially never in this class will I ever draw the arrow pointing to the left because that would cause too much surprise. Okay, but understand that the meaning of the, the arrow is that's the increasing direction. Okay, so then from this picture, you can you can come to the conclusion that a is smaller than b. A less than b. Similarly, another copy of the line. It is very common to single out one particular point, the zero point, and the zero point is referred to as the origin. Which is in some ways uh, nice and also not nice because after all, doesn't, doesn't that kind of look like an O anyway? It's not, it's a zero and that's an O, but whatever. So what's our name for the, for the points that are, on, on, that are to the left of zero? We have a name for all of them. They're all to the left of zero. They're all, they're all called negative. All, right, all, all of those are, are negative. So, so uh, algebraically, to be negative means to be less than zero. Uh, geometrically, that means to be on the left side of zero. 
means to be over there. So then what's the name for all of these? Positive, very good. Okay, so as a result, if I draw one more line, and specify that that's the origin, Let's say, let's say that uh, I, I select a point right here. I select this point. And then I get out uh, the ruler, a linear measuring device, and measure, measure that distance to be 2. Suppose we measure that distance to be 2. Then what is that point? Negative 2. But wait, I thought we just said we measured the distance to be 2. Right, correct. So it's, you've got a, the distance you have to travel is 2, but you have to go to the left, which is the decreasing direction. So that would mean that this is negative 2. Whereas, whereas, if we select, say, this point right here, and if we measure that distance right there, and we measure, we measure that distance to be 3, then what is this point? positive 3, because it's to the right. Very good. So all things that we all knew. Uh, now, what, what this section is about is about using two copies of the reels uh, at the same time, except, except one of the copies of the reels is going to be at a right angle to the other. So if you look up and look at the ceiling tiles for a minute, uh, we could, you know, we could name all of the ceiling tiles in the following way. I could say that that uh, that one that the exit sign is on is tile zero zero, and then we could name each one of the tiles in the following way. If you move one position this way, then then that one would be one zero, and then two zero, three zero, four zero, etc. But if we travel in that way, I'll say that the other one changes its name. So one number is going to specify how far we are going this way, the other number specifying how far we're going that way. Okay, so two numbers are going to be required because there's two directions to travel, left and right, front and back. So this situation geometrically is a line. So now we're talking about a plane. And then the way you write the thing that's analogous to that, the way you write denote a plane, is still with an R, still with an R, except now you write squared. And that's interpreted to mean that there's going to have to be two numbers that we're dealing with. Here, one number is enough to say where you are on the line. Here, in this situation, we're going to need two numbers. And this, geometrically, is going to be a plane. So we're still going to have a copy of the reels oriented horizontally and increasing to the right. And we're going to have a second copy of the reels oriented vertically. Okay, so notice, so far, that I haven't indicated what about the vertical copy of the reels? Yeah, I haven't denoted the, the direction of increase. So there is a standard convention in math for the direction of increase for the vertical axis. What is it? Up. So that's the direction of increase for the vertical axis. So for those of you who are into computers for whatever reason, maybe you like video games or maybe you want to be a computer scientist or whatever, um, you should know that there are lots of conventions for the direction of increase for coordinates. So in computer science, in computer science, the convention is that. That is to say, in computer science, the top left is zero zero, and then horizontal, you, the positive direction of increase is to the right and down in computer science. The reason is, the reason is, is because when Farnsworth, who's Farnsworth? I'm not talking about Futurama, right? 
Farnsworth, the guy who invented the television. Okay, the guy who invented the television and television monitors. It, it, you know, of course, you need a monitor to be doing any computers things. Okay, well, the way the, the way that they work is that there's a pixel right there that I'm pointing to. And to draw the screen, what the, what the monitor does is it draws that pixel and the one to its right and then the one to its right and then the one to its right, the one to its right, all the way until it hits the right edge. And then it moves down one row back to the beginning. And then this one, 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 this one. And then back to the beginning, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So in time, you're going this way and this way in computer science. So I'm just telling you this so that you don't think that there's somehow something intrinsically important about this. There isn't, except this is always the way we're going to do it <laughs> in math. Good. So now, just like this line extends infinitely far left and right, this one and this one and this one, they go all the way left and right. This is a, is a plane, and it extends infinitely far in two directions. It goes all the way. Okay, so then that is to say this point is on the plane, that point is on the plane, and if I could reach way over there, that point would be on the plane too. So these lines, they carve the, the entire plane up into four pieces, right? One, two, three, four pieces. And the name for those individual pieces is quadrants, and they're numbered like this. So the top right quadrant is referred to as quadrant one, but because of historical baggage, uh, it's written with Roman numeral one. So that's quadrant one. Uh, then, so this is the first one, and then they're uh, enumerated counterclockwise, which is to say, which one is the next one? Top left, right? So this is quadrant two, this one is quadrant three, and this one is quadrant four. And lovely, in the Romans, thank you for this, how do you write four? IV, IV right? Whatever that's about. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, you can refer to the quadrants as top left, bottom right, whatever. Okay, good. So another matter of convention is that because we have two copies of the reels, each of them has an origin, right? Because this copy of the reels has its origin, this copy of the reels has its origin, this one has an origin, but I didn't say where it was. Okay. The convention here is that, is that the origin of both is occurring right where they cross. So that is to say, this point right here is the origin of both. This is where this is the horizontal origin and also the vertical origin. So collectively, this is referred to as just the origin. Okay. Now, um, if we wanted to, when we were dealing with the line, if I pointed at a point like that one, the way that we name it is we measure its distance to the origin, and then if it's to the right of the origin, we call it positive that distance, and if it's to the left of the origin, we call it negative that distance. That's how we give every point on the line a name. So now the question is, is how do we give every point on the plane a name? They all need a name. So suppose we're talking about this point here. The question is, is how, will we, how will we give it a name? Okay, so then the way that you give it its name is that imagine that uh, this is a flashlight right here, very bright, and it's uh, casting that red point's shadow on the horizontal axis. So it's casting its shadow down to the horizontal, so it would cast its shadow right there on that point. And then suppose that we turn the flashlight and shine it this way, uh, it would cast another shadow, but now it would cast a shadow on the vertical axis. Right there. So that's good, because that means that, well, we can measure this, because we already talked about how to measure that up here, right? Because now we're only dealing with 
a copy of the reals. Suppose that we measure this to be A. Would A be positive or negative? Positive. It'd be positive. Because why? Because it's to the right of its origin. Okay, and suppose we measure this to be B. Would B be positive or negative? Positive. positive. Why? Because it, it's, on the, it's on the positive side of its origin. Okay, as a result, that's going to be, that's how we're going to say the name of this point, AB. How far you'd have to travel in the horizontal direction, how far you have to travel in the vertical direction. So that's what I mean when I was saying, let's name the ceiling tiles. Let's name that one zero zero, and then this one next to it one zero, and the next next one two zero, etc. Okay, good. So all of these angles right here, these are all right angles. So that's a right angle. This is a right angle. Right angle. Right angle. So then, what's the name of this kind of shape? Not a square, not necessarily, it could be a square, but not necessarily a square, a rectangle. So be, for that reason, I'd like for you to imagine that I could grab that point and move it around, and then you'd see that rectangle also wiggling around with it. But what I want you to understand is that no matter where you put that point, uh, it's always going to be at the corner of some rectangle. For that reason, this is referred to as a rectangular coordinate system. And then any time someone puts an adjective in, some, in front of something, then I hope that you have the thought, well, I wonder if I can change that adjective around. So the adjective here is rectangular. Well, maybe there's like a blue coordinate system or something, right? Not that I know of. Blue, blue yeah, why not? I mean, <laughs> if you can say a rectangular one, then why can't you say a blue one or a plaid one? <laughs> So there are other coordinate systems, but we're not going to deal with them in this class. But there, there's plenty of other ones besides just, just this one. OK, <clears throat> good. So what, is, what are the coordinates of the origin? Zero, zero, right? So the origin is at zero, zero. A few more conventions. So. We will refer to this as the horizontal axis. And if we're going to call this one the horizontal uh, axis, then what are we going to call the other one? Vertical. The vertical axis. And very often, uh, each one of these axes is associated to a named variable. And it is usually, but not always, the case that we'll refer to uh, the horizontal x axis as the x-axis. And then in that case, almost always, the vertical axis is what? Y. The y-axis. But it doesn't have to be x and y. It could be p and q. Or it could be w and z. It could be, it could be anything. OK. Good. So suppose that. Uh, we look at an axis here. And I select this point. So my question for you is that um, I want you to tell me, so in, in the first place, you need two numbers to specify where it is. And because I didn't draw a scale and I didn't hand you a ruler, y you can't tell me if that's, uh, if that's like 5.5 five or 5 million, 3 trillion or whatever. You can't tell me that. But because of the way I've drawn it, you can tell me the sign of the SIGN, the sign of the first coordinate and the sign of the second coordinate. So what's the sign of the first coordinate? Just, just a, it's positive, right? The sign of the first coordinate is positive. Why is it that the sign of the first coordinate is surely positive? Because it's to the right of the horizontal origin. It's on the right side. OK, 
Okay, what is the sign of the second coordinate? Negative. negative. Why is the sign of the second coordinate negative? Yeah. Right, because it's below the vertical origin. It's on the negative side of the vertical origin. So, so we don't know exactly what the coordinates are, but we do know their signs. From, from this drawing. Now I want you to um, I want you to show me uh, don't, don't say it out loud, don't blurt it, let everyone figure it out. Where would it be the case that we find a point that has coordinates where the first one is negative and the second one is positive? So don't blurt it out, figure out where it is. Okay, so Supposing that you only knew something about the first coordinate. Supposing that you only knew that the first coordinate was negative. What would that do to narrow down where it is? It's got to be on the left side. It's got to be on the left side if the first coordinate is negative. What if you only knew that the second coordinate was positive? Well, how would that narrow it down? It's got to be on the top. So this is saying it must be on the left side of the plane. That's saying it must be on the top side of the plane. So it's got to be in the top left of the plane. Good. Any question about this? OK. So supposing that those are all integer coordinate lines, that is to say that the, the main ones are integers, so that's an integer, integer, but that one's a half integer. Okay, so supposing that's the case, I want you to please tell me, uh, so don't blurt it out loud, but I want, I'm going to ask, what are the coordinates of that point? Okay, so what are the coordinates? 2, 4. 2, 4. 2, 4. Because to get to it, you'd have to travel 2 in the horizontal direction and then 4 in the vertical direction. Okay, so this is point 2, 4. Any question about that? Okay, then suppose I say, I want you to find, uh, I want you to find the point negative 4, negative 4, uh, positive 3. Okay, so in which quadrant is the point negative 4, 3? Quadrant 2, and then using top, bottom, left, right, where is it? Top left. Because negative first coordinate means it's on the left side, positive second coordinate means it's on the top side, so it's in the top left. So negative 4, positive 3. So there it is. OK. How about, how about this point? What are its coordinates? Zero, negative two. So why is the why is the first coordinate zero? What does that mean? Yeah. So it means that it means you, you the first coordinate means how far did you need to travel in the horizontal direction from the origin? So how far did you need to travel horizontally? None, right? You didn't need to travel horizontally. You were already in the right spot. That's, that's why it's zero. And the negative two, because it's down there. Uh, OK, so what's true? What's true about the horizontal coordinate of every point on the vertical axis? What's true about the horizontal coordinate? They're all zero. 
Everything on this vertical line is zero something. Up here it's zero something positive. Down here it's zero something negative. Okay, a similar thing we can say about the horizontal one. What's true, what's a similar thing we can say about the horizontal axis? All of, the, all of the vertical coordinates, all the y coordinate if you like. All the second coordinates are zero. So this, for example, that, we're back. Okay, so then that point right there, what are its, what are its coordinates? Four zero. Four zero. Four zero. And then every, every point on the x-axis will be, on this side, will be positive comma zero. And all the points on the x-axis over here will be negative comma zero. Okay, very good. Any question about this? Okay, good. So now we have to have a heartfelt discussion about equations because it is quite likely that you were misled about that before you got here. Miss Harris, she's, she's rocking the boat. Okay, so, uh, I, so this is a remark about equations. So here is an equation. The reason why this is an equation, quite simply, is because it has a left-hand side and a right-hand side and an equal in the middle. That's all that's necessary to be an equation. So. How about, uh, how about this, 13 equal 13? Is that an equation? Yes, it's an equation. It's an equation because it has a left-hand side and a right-hand side and, a, and an equal in the middle. It's an equation. And here's where the fun begins. How about 13 equal 14? Is that an equation? It, it, it is an equation. It is. It's an equation because it has a left-hand side and a right-hand side and an equal in the middle. So some of you are saying, okay, that's it. We've gone off the rails. <laughs> that's it. So now, the reason is because typically by the time students get to this class, you've, you've conflated and confused two separate notions. Okay? This is an equation. It is. But what is the evaluation of this equation? Equations can, can evaluate to, to just two values. One of them is called true and the other false. What is the evaluation of this equation? False. false. It's an equation. It's false. That, that doesn't mean that there's something immoral or unethical about it. It's an equation and it's false. How about this one? This is an equation, and it's true. It's an equation, and it's true. Okay, how about this one? Is it an equation? Yes. But it has an indeterminate value in it, a variable. So this equation is, is at the present time, neither true nor false. It's neither one. Okay, so let's take that equation. Let's take that equation, 3x equal 12, and I want you to perform an operation on it. I want you to substitute x equal 4, which is to say what? I, everywhere you see x, I want you to replace it with 4. So if we do that, then we have 3 times 4 equal 12, then we can evaluate the multiplication and get 12. And so now we're at an equation that actually does have a truth value. Is it true or false? It's true. This equation is true. Okay. 
So let's start with that same equation, which here is neither true nor false. And let's substitute x is 10. So that means everywhere that you see an x, I want you to replace with 10. So that would result in a left-hand side that looks like 3 times 10, and a right-hand side that's still 12. And then 3 times 10, well, that's 30. The right-hand side is 12. And so this thing, is it an equation? Yes. yes. It's an equation. What is its value? False. Good. So any questions so far? So what, what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to tease apart these two notions that you may have formerly thought were the same notion. Yes, it's an equation. It is false. OK. So now equations can have multiple variables in them. So for example, y is 2x minus 1. So this is, this is an equation because it has a left-hand side and a right-hand side and an equal in the middle. It's an equation. At the present time, it can't, it can't be evaluated. It's neither true nor false. So the, so the question is, uh, to, 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 to evaluate it means to perform a substitution. So for example, let's perform the substitution. Let's substitute xy is equal to, say, uh, 3, 5. So that's what I'm saying is that everywhere you see an x, I want you to replace with 3. And everywhere you see a y, I want you to replace with 5. Okay. Doing that, what's the left-hand side? 5. And continuing, what's the right-hand side? Two times three minus one, which is five. Is it an equation? Yes. What is its value? True. True. OK. Whereas? If we make the substitution x, y, equal to 13, 14, if we do that, then the new left-hand side is 14, and the right-hand side is 25. It is an equation, and what's its value? False. False. Good. Any question about this discussion? OK. A remark. The graph of an equation in two variables x, y is the set of all uh, x, y, such that the equation is true. When you plug in. So. I'd like to note something that Ms. Harris also misled you about. <laughs> and that is that the definition of a graph has nothing whatsoever to do with a drawing. Nothing whatsoever. It doesn't say the graph of an equation is a, is a drawing. It says the graph of an equation is a set. It's a set. OK, so then, so then Literally, <laughs> when, when I hear someone say, I have a graphing calculator, when, when what they mean is that I have a calculator that can draw pictures, it kind of grates my, in my ears. It sounds like chalk, you know, scratching a chalkboard. 
So a graph is a set. So I could ask the question, here's, here's an example of an equation in two variables, x and y. Is the point 3, 5 in the graph? Yes. yes. Why is 3, 5 in the graph? Because when you plug it in, you get true. How about the point 13, 14? Is that in the graph? No. No. Why is 13, 14 not in the graph? Because when you plug in 13, 14, you get that equation, which is false. So the question about whether or not a point in a graph is, is an algebraic question alone. Okay, good. So let's consider that equation. Let y is be 2x minus 1. First question, is the point uh, 10, uh, 8 in the graph? So how do you confirm or deny this? Plug it in. Plug it in right? it's, what you need to do is everywhere that you see an x, you replace it with 10, and everywhere you see a y, you replace it with 8. Okay, so the question is, is that, well, we plug in that. 8 is 2 multiplied by 10 minus 1. Well, that's 8 is equal to 19. So what's the answer to the question? Is 10, 8 in the graph? It is not. Okay, and then you can imagine I ask you the same question for a number of points. And then it, th the answer to the question is plug it in. If, if it's a true equation, the answer is yes. If it's a false equation, the answer is no. So usually what we're interested in is just the points that are in the graph. That is to say, just the ones, just the points where you plug in and you get true. So this is usually done in the following kind of way. I could say, okay, let's make a table of values. So the first row is x's and the second row y's. And we'll start with negative 3. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So what I mean by this is I mean I want to consider I want to consider x values negative 3 blah 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 all the way. So and what I want is I want you to fill in this row. I want you to fill in this row such that whatever I write here, if I were to write, you know, uh, 47, then what I want is for the point negative 3 47 to be in the graph. So that's a, that's a long-winded way to say, what y would you get? What y do you need so that this equation will be true? So how about it? Negative 7. Because if you replace the x with negative 3, that would be saying that y is equal to negative 6 minus 1, which is to say negative 7. So if you were to substitute the point negative 3, negative 7 into that equation, it would be true. Okay, what's the next one? Negative 5. What's the next one? Negative 3. Okay, so does anyone see a pattern yet? What's happening? Every time you move a position to the right, you add 2. Now, is there some reason for that, or is that a coincidence? It's that 2 right there. That 2 is what's happening. If we replace that 2 with a 22, then every time we move to the right, we'd add 22. OK, so let's, let, let's see if that really works. So the next one would be negative 1, and then 1, and then 3, and then 5. That, I just added 2. I didn't look at the equation doing that. Let's check the last one. Is 3, 5, do I have that right? How do I confirm or deny that? Plug it in. 
it, so, so is this in the graph? It is. Notably, notably, we haven't drawn any pictures yet. Okay, which I hope, which I hope raises the question in you that, <laughs> that is, I did all this drawing things, pictures, before this. What's the name of that if it's not a graph? Well, what is the name of the pictures that you drew? What's the proper name for it? It's a, it is a P word, but it's not picture. It starts with P. Plot. Plot. That is the name for, for, those, uh, for the pictures. <coughs> so I want you to plot all the points that were in that table. So, for example, one of the points is 1, 1, 1, 1. So there it is, 1, 1. Uh, another point uh, would be 2, 3, which is to say move 1 to the right and 2 up. So that would be here. And then uh, 3, 5. So from here, how would I have to move? One to the right, One to the right and two up. two up. Okay, and then in fact this pattern continues, right? Except moving to the left, if I move one to the left, how do I have to move? Yeah. Two down, right? So there, 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 and then the next one I'd fall off the edge. So I'll just leave that. So we were able to plot six points, those six separate points. That's, that's all of the points that are in the table except for that one, which wouldn't fit. So now we, we plotted these six points. I'd like for you to imagine, well, what if instead of plotting these six points, we plotted like six million points, just lots and lots of them all over the place? OK, so then I, ho I hope you've had the experience of going as a child to somewhere like the Red Lobster or something like that. Olive Garden, <laughs> Olive Garden if you like that better, or whatever you like. So, uh, you know, B Bennigan's, is that a thing still? I don't remember. But you, you have the child's menu, and you remember connecting the dots? Do you remember that game? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about here. If you were to do that, then you would obtain this. And that's a straight line. Okay, that's a line. All of those points fall in a line. So I have a question for you now. Uh, I asked a question, is 10, 8 in the graph? Now I'm going to ask a question again. What time is it? Yeah, good. Is the point, is the point um, 5, 1 in the graph? So that's the same question as this one, except I'm using a different point. So that means that you could address this question I just wrote in the same way. You plug it in, and you check if the equation is true. So if you, do, if you were to plug it in, the left-hand side would be 1, and the right-hand side would be 9. 1 equal 9. Is it an, equa is it an equation? Yeah. Yes. Is it true? No, it's false. 1 equal 9 is false. But here's the thing, once you have a plot, once you have a plot, where is the point 5, 1? On the, on, the, on the axis. It's right there, isn't it? Now, I'm going to ask a different question. Is that point part of the plot? Is it, that is to say, is it part of this? It isn't. So the answer to the, to the question, is that point in the graph, is no, because it's not part of the plot. What this represents, this represents all the points that if we were to select one of them and plug it into the equation, that's where the equation is true. That's where it's true. If you select any point that's not one of these and you plug it into the equation, the equation will be false. So 
if we were to plug in that point right there, true or false? True. That one? That one? That one? False. Okay, that's what this drawing represents. It's where the equation is true. Where the equation is true and, and also by process of elimination where the equation is false. Okay, any question about uh, these things? Okay, so that's all that we have for today. So have a nice uh, Wednesday. <laughs>